G'day guys, this is the second video of the um, carport walls that we're doing. So this first wall that's already uh, built there is going to support a truss going across with a carport door. That is essentially a big pillar and uh, wall attached to it, so it's going to have a lot of forces. Again, watch that video, it should already be uploaded. Um, this wall is going to uh, be on an angle, like the top of the wall is going to be on an angle up like that. And as you can see, we have set up a big doorway in there. That's the reusable forms that you'll see if you go to our doorway form video. Someone is mixing as uh, the boys have just double checked everything. All the pins and nuts are tight, tech screws, everything. They just go over everything. And now he's putting the first um, dump of mud in. Now you can see he's put some on the ground as well, because to the right of that doorway, there is a, it's only a very small pillar. So it's not too hard just to shovel it straight off the ground as he's doing there. There is rods into the concrete in that because it's a small pillar. Even though it does, it, it's going to link in with the keyway. Again, look at the keyway video for how to join walls. So it is going to lock in with the keyway, but we're also going to put um, rods in to strengthen that pillar because essentially it's quite a small pillar and there's a high likelihood it'll get knocked by bikes, motorbikes, quads, Pallet, pallet trolleys whatever so we're going to make it a bit stronger than what it probably needs to be um, the it, as you can see there he's ramming he's, he's at nearly at the top of there already and they're already going to start putting the second forms on even though they haven't finished on the left section of that door as we're looking at it the left section of that door is not finished he's tightening up the acro props just making sure Always check and double check, the forms are not perfect, so the more you check it, the better it's going to be. Um, and uh, as you can see, when they lift the forms up, just watch how they, they put it there, and then one person will hold it while the other goes and gets pegs and puts them in. So the pegs hold the form in place. We don't allow the forms to sit there without being pegged, and we say to anyone on the worksite, don't climb on them unless the pins and the nuts are through. So you can see we've got two rams going there, it just goes so much quicker. And uh, especially when there's not much in the wall, there's no strengthening rods in that section of wall. There's no wall boxes down the bottom. And uh, so they're ramming right to the top. And now you'll see the uh, the younger kids now come. You see right on the right hand side there is putting pins through and everyone is, um, is helping out. Now safety, you'll notice everyone's wearing thongs. Um, but just here we are praying this is we're talking to jesus inviting him to be on the work site i believe this is the reason that we have not had major injuries or in fact very little of any injury whatsoever um, because he's our foreman he comes he's our safety officer and he literally directs um, us at times and he's saved us so many times from specific things happening um, i'll go through that i mean you, you're going to hear stories of that all the way through um, you'll hear one of the children say oh, I felt that God told me to go over to the barrel to get something and when I walked over there something dropped off the form right where I was standing or you know a snake got hit by the bobcat and because of that its neck was broken and so when I I didn't know the snake was there and I went underneath the, the bucket and it tried to bite me it couldn't because it had a broken neck and I mean we could talk for hours on the things that um, God has done for us and uh, yeah, but we do tell the kids to be safe. So uh, you'll see now, um, as we go up to the next level, um, the I'll, I'll try and describe to you how we do the forms and our process to try and be as safe as possible and efficient. Uh, so they're about to finish going up to level two. So this is at 1.2 meters high when they've finished these, uh, ramming these forms here. And it's going very, very quickly because it's um, there's not a, a big volume. Uh, there's a, it looks like there's about three or four hundred on the other side of that form on the right hand side, and on the left there's what is probably about two, two point one meters, maybe two point two at the most. So essentially, it's only about one form long of mud, which for us is half half volume. Now, as you can see, they'll carry the um, the form over there then they hold it in place while the other person puts pegs in so the pegs are in place um, but it's still not fully he's now putting a nut and a pin or a pin through and then a nut on it and that pulls them together now once that happens it's virtually impossible for that form 
to fall even if you rammed into it with the bobcat um, so what we say is you know get the pins and the nuts on as quickly as possible um, especially the higher you go the more important this is because as you go high you have to climb on the wall quite a lot and if that form falls down or bends there's going to be a serious injury so um, you'll see here as we get I'm starting to get the um, the GPOs ready because we're at 1.2 and also the uh, you can see there that's where we're starting to put the reinforcing rod in um, which I'm a little bit late with that I should have put it in a bit earlier so you'll see we hammer it down and um, again I'll, as we get to the third form well, hopefully we can yeah there you go so I'm starting to hammer that rod down now which making a bit of work for ourselves by forgetting but at least we get it in there and the young kids love hammering as you can see there they give it a good belt um, and uh, we get it down to the required height so that's fine um, now as you can see there they're sitting on top of that form I don't suggest that it's uh, not always safe it can fall it can move uh, our kids have grown up literally living on a work site they're very aware of what can damage them what falls what doesn't um, so don't be thinking just because they're sitting on it looks safe uh, and I can do that it you can hurt yourself it can fall be very aware you're on a work site you need to be careful um, as you can see there they've put another form up and now the young guy there is hitting the pegs in he runs around the back to do the same on the back now there's a pin going through and now the pins hold it together now on the left hand side you can see we've got an upright and you see he's tech screwing there a uh, trick with that so you don't snap your tech screws all the time is well if you're using the same metal forms as what we are is what we designed and made up um, tighten your pins and nuts as much as you can so that the form is hard against that end piece when it's hard against there you should be able to drill through both the form and the upright with one tech screw and we can generally reuse our tech screws two or three times just to save money if you're using good tech screws again have a look in the link we sell tech screws that are uh, they're the ones we use and they are, are strong enough to do that I see I'm bending the electrical conduit there for the wall boxes and we'll start putting those in because there's going to be a like a breakfast bar or a bench and then the GPOs, the electrical outlets, will be just above the bench so they're at 1.2 metres. Pardon me, the more conduit and uh, reinforcing you put in the wall, the harder it gets to, to ram, especially if you've got a big head. These The boys on this day that you're watching, they've got very, very big heads on the rammers, which is actually a bit of a problem going around the conduits and that sort of stuff so they're um, currently at um, uh, 1.8 meters so that's three forms high once we get to the next forms up you'll notice you won't see much of the younger two kids oh well you're not going to see anything for a bit because food's out so you'll see uh, people stop now just as a uh, the, the girl in red there is my daughter she has been inside with my youngest cooking so they've made up some I don't know, can't remember what they were, pies and just bake some stuff and brownie and all sorts of things and so we're sitting down eating, having a chat and um, but you'll see she's up there now shoveling she's a vital part of the team in cooking so we can keep working all day but she's she also loves to do the shoveling as well um, the can't remember what the conversation was about I was going to see if I could remember but no clues no idea um, but it's always a good time to uh, chill out eat and um, but we generally again it's probably common sense for most people while you're working don't eat too much in one hit if you eat a little bit at a time um, at a number of times through the day you'll find that your body stays in activity mode and, and you don't get sluggish but if you have too much to eat especially if it's wheat or sugary foods you will uh, in half an hour an hour you're going to start feeling very sluggish so we try and avoid uh, working hard and then stopping for a big lunch and then working again we you know have lots of small meals generally and don't we generally don't eat too much while we're working even if it's a long day 
as you can see, there's people holding it while uh, Shalisha in red is putting pegs in. So those pegs will hold it. See, she's going along again, putting pegs in. And then once the, the same thing will happen at the back, um, if she gets off her phone. But uh, it's okay, she's just working out what she's doing for lunch. Don't worry, guys, she's not on Facebook or anything. <laughs> the uh, And then, yeah, now he's putting a nut up the top. And as the nuts go along, then it's become safer and safer. Uh, Again, as you can see, little Nathaniel there, he's uh, seven years old at this point, and he's still able to climb up and put pegs in, and he'll get up there and put uh, the pins and nuts through. After this height, we generally will see less of them, uh, because once you get up to 2.4, um, now you... Well, sorry, above this is uh, three metres. Once you're at three metres, you're quite a bit above the even the scaffold and it starts to get more and more dangerous uh, for people falling off and you know just getting in each other's way so we have less people as we go up um, and the roles become a bit more uh, clarified or is that the right word we don't have lots of people just doing anything it's like one person will stick to one thing sort of thing so that there's not too much moving around on the wall um, as you can see they're they're tightening up um, and putting uh, vice grips on and all that sort of thing. The other thing now is we're going uh, above the doorway. So remember where that doorway was. Now, he's still got a little bit to ram on the left to get up to the doorway. Once we get above the doorway, then we've got to remember to put our uh, infill reinforcement in. Now, I'm not going to describe what that is in this video. Make sure you watch the infill videos. Um, if you're a subscriber, you'll have more specific detail about that otherwise you need to talk to your engineer we don't use lintels we've never used a lintel we use reinforcing in the he just i don't know if you noticed that he just tightened uh, some wire around the conduit when you have a single conduit it flaps around everywhere in the wind when it's long but if you have two or three together and you tie them then they um look like it's come undone there but on this i just put another one in the when you tie them together they they move around yeah he's retying it they move around a lot less um, the, I just got distracted, oh, the infills, so with infills, yeah, we don't use lintels, um, a lot of engineers will specify a concrete lintel, if you're a subscriber, we'll go through the details of what, um, we do and what works and what was specified by an engineer, um, that is much, uh, much easier to build, it's more logical, uh, it's quicker, it saves you money and it's strong we can uh, anyway again look at those infill videos for that now you can see they're actually putting in the wall pins now we call them wall pins that is again there's a video for wall pins but uh, that's just a long pin with a plate welded to it so the plate goes underneath the mud the, the mud goes on top and the pin sticks up the top with a threaded section so you can bolt your bond beam down now your bond beam is essentially your uh, for us it's metal always we have done everything with metal but it's the beam that your roof then attaches to so when you've got uh, you're in a storm or extremely high winds um, and it's lifting the roof up then it's giving your roof something to bite down and hold down so essentially the roof's trying to lift the wall up um, on those wall pins so the wall pins, again, there's a video for wall pins and how to work out the heights and that sort of thing. And as you can see now, they're just lifting forms up onto the back scaffold. So this is now three metres they're going up to. And as you can see, a young bloke did that on his own. It's not good for his back. Um, I'll be having words to him about that. He, he did keep his back straight, but that's not that's not the point. But he's, yeah, they said they're using the the bobcat to lift the machine up and then uh, myself and my daughter we're scraping up just some of the mess this is about the fourth time we did it that day and you'll see it's uh, there's actually quite a bit there you will waste around two or three buckets of mud if you just let it all go to waste when it's on concrete on a day like this it lasts for a few hours quite easily before you have to rewater it or mix it in with more uh, with the, the newer mud so it's well worth scraping up and reusing um, to save yourself some money and, and time because doing an extra mix in the day can make a big difference. 
um, the uh, I'm just seeing what is coming next there. I don't know why there's nothing happening. There must be mixing mixing mud and looking for the next forms. Yeah, there you go. So now that form on top has not been used for a long time. Look how rusty it is. So they've decided to use it further up the wall. Um, we were talking about infills just before. We're putting more infill bars than we need here because we're going to put a mezzanine, an upper level on this wall. And knowing us, now here, they can see how they haven't got the form in properly. A tech screw had snapped off and was stuck in the form, so we couldn't couldn't put it in. Um, and so, yeah, we've had to get that out before we could, could put it in. Now, again, pegs in first, then nuts at the top, uh, pins and nuts at the top and now the form can't go anywhere so it's safe and once that happens everyone gets into the rest of their jobs we took a piece of land it might sound strange but god told us to buy it despite not having the money he told us to build despite not knowing how we had to learn each step of the way research trial and error training whatever it took we've documented each step of the way and we're able to teach you many many things that are going to help you live with and for god help you build your family help you build your home and help you build your business be sure to subscribe we're also putting together a rammed earth course some of it will be free some will be a trade-off as we tell you about jesus and some might be a paid subscription to help us cover costs Either way, all of it will be very, very useful. So hit the subscribe button or click the link to see all the details about our Round Earth course. So as they come to the top of this form, uh, we, up until this point, you might have noticed there might have been hundred or even two hundred mil gap between the mud and the top of the form and they already start putting new forms up now it doesn't when you're on lower levels it really doesn't make too much difference but now at three meters our machine our bobcat can't lift the mud any higher than a 2.4 form so now at its full height they have to shovel the mud in so what happens now is they will fill up the form right to the top and ram it even though when you ram right to the top you lose a lot of mud out of the sides so the ram will flick it over and um, all that sort of stuff the other thing is when you're standing up on the wall and ramming when you're at lower levels it's quite easy and um, you can step off onto the scaffold or you know down onto the ground when it's high you start uh, getting to the point where you um, your your whole contact is on the top lip of those forms, so you're walking back and forth, back and forth. Now, if it's if the mud is low, so the form's nearly empty, you can stand down in the mud and ram. But it's it's pretty difficult. It's easy to, especially if it's windy, it's easy to fall over because you can't really manoeuvre much. So you find that you're just edging along the top of the forms mostly and ramming from there now they're putting an end piece and they're just going to stop uh, talking about the the ramming um, making sure it's level and putting they'll put a, an end key and i haven't seen whether they've done that yet but making sure there's a number of tech screws into that because that can get knocked and fall over so if there's only two tech screws um, in the top of it and someone leans on it and it falls well that's serious so when it's a piece like this it's only half in a form we'll put extra tech screws in and the people ramming will make sure they they don't go too close to it um, so back to ramming once you if you can sort of picture maybe hopefully they you, you'll see that now when they're uh, I think they're, they're putting oh yeah they're putting wall boxes in for the GPOs so um, they're just making sure the level is <laughs> right, but you'll see when we unveil the, the one of them didn't work, uh, was not the right level. Um, but again, if you look at a, the video, we've got four wall boxes, and that we've um, I'll show you how to work out where to put it. Now that machine's at its top height, so as you can see, he's he's got his feet down in the forms. But if you look to the right of the bobcat, the person ramming, see he's uh, he's actually standing on the formwork. Um, now. 
it is pretty dangerous at this height, especially when you're ramming. You, I don't, you can almost see it. You can see there's actually um, rocks on the top of the formwork where he's standing. As you can see, see the person ramming on the left. Now look at how he's got to move around all those conduits and all that sort of stuff. Now if he gets that conduit stuck in his pants and he tries to move or the ram goes, it's very, very easy to fall off, guys. This is, this is a very, very dangerous job. Um, and we teach the people who are uh, shoveling or anyone doing anything on the walls, you get out of the way of the person with the ram. That ram is dangerous, they're doing a hard job and you enable them to have as clear... Um, look at that, they see they're going above the top of the form there. They're, they're putting so much in that it's above the top of the form. Um, oh no, that's just a bit of wastage, isn't it? Yeah, okay. But again, you see there's, there's mud on top of the wall and he on the form and he's standing on top of that, so it is quite dangerous. But they're going to keep going as high as they can um, before putting the next form up because obviously when they put another form up they've got to do even more shoveling so the higher you go the more you're going to fill up um, the form you know down below you might even put a new form on when you're halfway up or even some sometimes we'll put two forms on before we even start and um, it just means we don't have to stop to put that second form on um, it just makes moving around in the forms a little bit more difficult. Um, but when you download the first two forms, you can actually stand outside the form and be ramming the first two anyway. So it doesn't, you know, there's all different ways of doing it. Um, the So you can see there, the top of those forms is at three metres, but the wall itself that, that we're doing for the roof is actually going to start, the lowest level is at 3.2 metres. So you can see these putting another reinforcing bar in and uh, he's lifting new forms up. Now they're both holding onto it and there's people behind there putting the pegs in. So they wouldn't have just left that form there. So the pegs will be getting hammered in. We can't see that. Um, actually, we, I think we might have a, a video from the other side that we can, we can add there. Um, same deal you see there. I've just put some pegs in. You watch, he's going to lift it up. Now I'm getting out the way while I'm don't sit underneath the form. Now I'm putting a peg in, and he's putting a peg in the other side. And now there's two or three pegs holding, and you'll see that guy in the middle, it's Elijah, he will put a, a pin through very quickly and put a nut in there. I've just passed it to him. Shalisha's in there now. And um, boy, she's, she's done a lot of work today. The and then the nuts are in. So now he's going to tighten those nuts up on the on the left there. Um, he's tightening them all up. But then when they're tight, then we start putting tech screws into that end piece to make sure that's all um, nice and tight. Now, I don't know if you're going to see where that guy is on the right-hand side. That's Jediah. He is either putting in or he's about to put in a end piece there because the wall will go up there. He's tightening up. The end piece must already be in there unless he's loosening it to get it in. I think it must already be in there. Yeah, it looks like he's tech screwing now. So there's a little end piece in there that um, will allow the wall to go up 20 centimetres before we start the angle. Um, yeah, there goes the, the end piece for the, the end key. And yeah, here comes the next bit of mud. So as you can see as well, there's quite that's quite a big um, bucket of mud, and you might find that boy, the, the bobcat's uh, obviously running out of fluid at this point. It's starting to to jerk when he's coming up and down. Um, now this section of wall that they're doing now, we don't have to go right up to the form. Uh, to the full height of that form because it's, remember it's going to be on an angle so right where Shalisha is there in the red that's going to come up she's she's hand ramming there for the corner that's only going to come up 200 you see in the background on the left there there's the young boys are climbing on the air compressor um, that's probably good another thing for safety we often will get the younger guys to stay there so that if there's any danger or they need the air compressor turned off quickly then those guys are ready to turn the taps off 
and um, make it safe. Uh, again, we try and enable the people who are on the rams so that they uh, don't have to do too much other stuff, if that makes sense. We, we try and enable them to do their hard job. Now, at the right-hand side there, they're probably already at the full height of what they need to go. And what you're going to need to make sure of when you're ramming an angle at the top, don't start um, making an angle and then ramming uh, everything at an angle, if that makes sense. Keep your filling and your ramming horizontal, but then you don't fill up as much when uh, at the lower levels, if that makes sense. So it's only your last ram that you'll actually ram on an angle. I don't know if that if you can picture what I'm saying, but you don't want your runs to start going on an angle. You just want the the wall to end on an angle, but the runs are still horizontal. Um, I'll try and describe that when we do. We'll do the unveiling of this wall, and I'll I'll describe that to you so you know what I mean. Maybe you do know what I mean um, already, but uh, it does take a lot of practice to ram and get the angle right. So much so, we've actually made the decision that we're not going to worry too much. So he's, he's just putting the last, they're half forms now, just to get that last little bit. Um, we've actually made the decision when it's not worth the extra time and effort to try and get it exactly right, to the right level. And it's so hard to get it straight that what we do is we just go, we, we do it approximate. It's probably a little, you know, three, four, five, even ten centimetres too high in places. But then we come back, we do a string line and we cut it again. We'll show you a video of that. But that way you can get an absolutely perfectly straight top of the wall. Um, these guys, this is starting to get quite late in the day. They've done, as you've watched this video, this video is like, well, it's long, it's half an hour long. But it's, that's a, a very easy compared to the, the, um, eight hours of work that they did so they're starting to get tired it's um, it's a lot of work and then if you are going to do it perfectly at the angle that's a lot of messing around you've got to have a laser level set up all that sort of stuff and then you've got to point up the wall I'll, I'll say point up the wall it's not traditionally pointing it up but you've got to really finish that top of the wall really really well which is a lot of arm work. So you've got to you've got to ram it with your arms. You've got to pat it down with your arms. You've got to trowel it with your arms. Um, and we just find, well, why don't we just do it quick and easy at the end? We'll just do it a little bit higher. And then another day when we're fresh, when we when we've got time, when even when we come to do the wall plates, you put up a string line, you cut it. It's nice and straight. You, you need to do a little bit of chiselling, and then you spray it with sealer. And it's, it's way quicker than the time it would have taken you on the ramming day, but on the ramming day you were tired as well. So so they've um, rammed it to where they need to now, and so now we've put, where it's about to rain. So they are um, putting on some black plastic, So because the mud hasn't set at all yet, um, you don't want water on it. So it's just putting some black plastic. There's actually heavy rain coming this night. So we're putting some, some wood, some uh, F-clamps and that sort of stuff to hold the, the wood and the formwork in uh, black plastic in place. And um, that's pretty much it, apart from putting tools away and cleaning. He's gone off to clean the bobcat, make sure he get as much of the mud off as he can. And stuff like, see this, this mud here, you don't want to leave it in a big pile. Um, but when the rain comes now, we're, the, the feeling now is amazing. It's, you know, it's not as good as when you unveil and you actually see it. But uh, fantastic guys, hope you enjoy. We'll see you next time for the next video which will be unveiling this very section.